know, if you think about what they've done, Fauci is in the witness protection program now. They don't want him out. They, no, they, they've never supported any. If you, if you listen to them, they never supported all these policies that were so destructive. Now it's like, you know, we all want to be like Florida all of a sudden, and nothing has changed. There's been no change in the underlying science. The ineffectiveness of those policies was apparent long ago. The destructiveness of those policies was apparent long ago. And they were the ones that were dipping their nose into Florida's business last summer saying that two-year-old kids needed to be forced masked when they leave the house, saying that school children had to wear masks for eight hours a day. Now they act like that was something they didn't support, and they're saying that you don't do it. They actually said two weeks ago that everyone at the, at the speech had to have an N95 mask. Then they changed it. How did the science change in two weeks? It changed. It didn't change. They changed that because they knew it would be a terrible visual to have all these people there suffering in mass, socially distant, while the rest of the country is out living their lives. And so I'm glad that I think it was because of politics. I don't think this was a, a legitimate conversion. I think they're getting negative polling, and I think most Americans associate these never-ending restrictions with their administration and, and like-minded governors and mayors. And it's interesting because for every governor or mayor that takes restrictive action, mandate, lockdown, almost all say, you know, critical of Florida. How many of them end up on vacation in Florida over the last year, year and a half? And there's a lot, and there's a lot that many of you know, but I can tell you there's even more that haven't been made public because people tell me these things because, you know, they work at, they work at like a you know, resort and they're like, wait a minute, that, if I was working in their state, I'd have been shut down, and yet they come down here and they're enjoying all this stuff. So I'm glad that they have pivoted off of it. Um, I think it's been really damaging, and I think you're going to continue to see problems with, um, with what we're seeing with, with some of the school children, how they were treated in a lot of these different parts of the country. I mean, can you imagine, like, you're in Chicago or Los Angeles or some of these places, and you can't get your kid in school for the entire year last year? Or you'd go in one day a week, and then forget about the, the, all the mitigation once you're in school. But that is a huge, huge thing. That's going to have huge ramifications far into the future. And, uh, and, and they were responsible for doing that. We stood up for kids in Florida. We stood up for parents. We stood up for education because we thought it was important. Um, and I think our kids are going to be much better off than a lot of these kids in these other states. And you know, even to that day last night, you have them saying no mask in the Capitol, which I support. But then they're still forcing kids in, in elementary school in certain parts of the country uh, to do this. And so uh, I'm glad that the conversion has happened. I don't think it's necessarily genuine. I think it's more driven by political science. But here's, I think, the stakes for just people in Florida and throughout the country. You know, once we get through that midterm election, um, I think people that are of that mindset will probably look to clamp down again. And so the only way you could be sure that your freedoms are going to be uh, respected is to make sure that you're supporting people who have a demonstrative record, demonstrated a record of actually supporting your freedom.